Yesterday afternoon, the town of Danville held its weekly farmer's market, located on the green in the center of town from 2 to 5. Many vendors were selling their products to anyone walking by. There was a wide variety of items to choose from, including fruits and vegetables, maple syrup, fresh oven pizza made right on the spot, and handmade wooden utensils in bowls. Uh, it's a weekly event. Um, all local farmers and artisans uh, we're here every week to sell our wares and have a good time, meet a lot of people. The Climate Action Commission held a local public forum last night in St. Johnsbury at the Tap Room. In addition to hearing recommendations, citizens were urged to share experiences with climate change and how it directly affects their lives. Some topics brought up included removing fossil fuels from Vermont and creating a carbon tax. The commission will be sending the recommendations to the governor's office as early as January. As part of the, uh, the Vermont Climate Action Commission, which the governor formed in July, uh, one of our first tasks was to go out and to hear from Vermonters all around the state to understand what, what they want us to be considering as we come up with recommendations to the governor. So, uh, at least three coming up in January and then about four by July of next year. We got in Route 15 in West Danville. The zoning district is empty. Oh, yeah. And the business is to repair. Uh, automob automobiles and, tr and trucks and general tractors, general equipment, you know, uh, small and large. And he also uh, wants to open an inspection station. To shoot up, backers of, the, backers of the idea say that they would help reduce HIV and hepatitis infection, as well as keep a monitor for drug overdoses. The idea will be considered in the legislature next year, but the Public Safety Commissioner Thomas Anderson was quick to say it was a bad idea. Anderson says that helping people use heroin will send the wrong message. I, I, I'm questioning uh, whether uh, they're going to be that successful or not. Uh, from my standpoint, I'm, I'm hesitant, uh, but I'm always willing to listen uh, to the, what they have to say. It's got to, it's got, it'll have to go through the legislative process, uh, but uh, from my standpoint, I don't think that that addresses the problem, and I'd like to see us uh, put more uh, money into treatment uh, rather than injection sites. And the students of St. Johnsbury Academy performed at a poetry contest held at the Academy's library last night. Each of the 19 students that had participated in the contest had a poem based off from a superpower of their choosing. A few of the superpowers included mind readers, teleporters, and hey, even Eric's profession, weather people, and flying. Some of the students even got their inspirations by the popular television show Supernatural. Mine, I think, was to fly, and I'm a huge fan of traveling. I've always wanted to just travel the world, and I think flying would make it a heck of a lot easier. This is the Academy's ninth year in a row of hosting a poetry contest. A local artisan shows off his skill of sculpting before getting ready for the holiday season. New 7's Kristen Plaud reports. I am making a... Father Christmas, and um, he's going to be carrying a couple presents, and sort of striding through the wood with a with a wooden staff. It actually started one year. We, we I made Christmas presents for people, and um, they said, "Oh, everybody said you got to sell these," and that's sort of when I, I I tried a show or two, and just sort of took off. I used they used the the image of say a Santa Claus or a snowman to bring my skill as a sculptor to a wider audience. This guy's got a really long beard, so I like to keep it longer than, or as long as the presents. This is going to be the nose and the eyebrows. That's one of the most important things about carving, because it's a subtractive process is you got to leave the highest point highest. <laughs> it's easy to cut off something like a nose or a cheek. I put a three coats of a urethane over it and that protects it and it gives it a nice sheen. 
Carl says he sells all of his pieces that he makes as people get ready for Christmas. As snow has fallen and been made covering the slopes and signaling the start of the ski season, New 7's Matthew Seaver was at Burke Mountain, for, met Burke Mountain for the first day of their public ski season. Burke Mountain opened its slopes to the public on Saturday, and conditions on the mountain were fast and bumpy. It's pretty good, but there's a lot of uh, death cookies, which are like little ice balls, but yeah, it's pretty great. Uh, pack powder, a little bit of corn, some ice in places, but for this time of year in v Vermont at Burke, it's great. It was the earliest opening for Burke in over a decade, and it brought all kinds of different people to the mountain. I've seen some pass holders, I've seen some out-of-staters, I've seen some locals. It's a great mix. One thing that everyone was looking forward to seeing more of was snow. Yeah, a lot more snow. Matthew Seaver, New 7. Perfect.